So how do you see yourself? Um, you know, one of the reasons we are doing this series is to talk to African thought leaders such as yourself. Um, to understand, you know, how you see the continent, first mm. of all, um, and how you see the continent, particularly in your purview of work. Mm. Um, so for you, kind of fusing media, PR and strategy, um, you know, what's your hope for the continent um, in, in that, in your, in your area of work? Okay, that's a really nice question. So yeah. First of all, every time we get on uh, Zoom calls with any of my colleagues, they just see sun, they're like, oh, and they in hoodies, they're like, what? <laughs> it's sun every day. <laughs> so I feel like uh, in that sense, Africa is really going to be a place where people scramble for. Mm -hmm. The only problem, okay, so we have seen a lot of people coming to Africa now. The only problem is they're not coming as quickly, although we think they are, because we don't have as much like uh, resource and um, what's called infrastructure that's extremely modern, right? We're, we're getting there, but we, we you still have like, a flyover and then a pothole. You see like an expressway then a pothole right next. So things like that. But you want, if you have standard development across the board, you'll see a proper scramble to Africa because we have everything. Like give an example of Kenya, right? We have mountains, ice, beach, desert, park in the middle of the city. Things like that that you can never find in any country. We have the number one hotel in the world now. Uh, so things that you can't find in many other countries. Africa, uh, we is in my world in in the pr world africa is one of those places so a lot of people are now getting even jobs in communication and communicating what africa is like mm -hmm. and you're seeing a lot more opportunities open up uh, what world for what non-governmental organization uh, communications officer for this because people are slowly seeing that you can't let someone sit in maybe the UK, in a UK office, to tell you what's happening on ground in Marsabit, for example, or Kenya's coast or Tanzania's coast. You have to have someone on ground. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we, I think we're, we're slowly seeing people want like very relatable content and very relatable people that are on ground. And I think uh, Africa's position in the world is you cannot deny it. Everyone keeps talking about um, how, you know, Asian markets or whatever, people come in, expatriate revenue and leave. But there's a very solid case to be made for people setting up in Africa and actually making, you know, like real money. Mm -hmm. And we can see it with, with our work. So I know there's a proper scramble coming. Uh, it has started already, but in my world, it's now up to us to tell them, okay, leave some for the community, leave the bulk of it for the community and mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how we're seeing Africa play a role. Yeah, you've actually brought up a very interesting point that I hadn't thought about in terms of the significance of you working in these media houses. Mm -hmm. The fact that you actually get to be at the center of yeah. telling these stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what has that meant for you? So when you when you when you're a journalist, you break the news or you know, but when you're a PR, mm -hmm. you make the news, right? So you tell them uh, uh, let's say like for example there's a there's a huge event coming up in Kigali and two of the richest people in the world will be in Kigali in June for Chogam and people don't know who that who that is I I'm probably not going to give a scoop here I, otherwise I leave and I'm fired but they will be in in uh, Kigali so now between now and uh, the next two months we are meeting with journalists meeting with you know editors and telling them Okay, so these people are going to be, yeah, how do you want to craft your editorial, you know, to speak to these people? Do you want us to put you in their calendar? And before, I'd be the one, you know, in the newsroom saying, oh, there's a hot story, you know, but it's only one. Mm -hmm. But we have to speak to like 50 journalists, mm -hmm. while in the other side, it was you speaking to one communications officer. So in my world, what I see now is that you control a lot of the narrative, although sometimes some journalists tell you, nah, that's not a good story and they shut you down and you feel how it felt when you told another person that story is not good enough, right, you know? Right. So um, that's, that's how I feel. We have a lot of power now, both media and the people who are trying to push the story mm -hmm. to media to just make Africa really prominent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and to tell the story the right way. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Let's talk about your social media for okay. a bit. Yeah, because yeah, obviously you're very active on there. Um, what are you hoping to achieve with your platform based on what you share and you know the content you create? 
Yeah, so you remember uh, uh, before I was telling you one of the reasons why BBC felt like you, uh, it was like you felt like you were struggling to get out of a box mm -hmm. was because you were not able to do much. But now with the, the new job, the new job uh, allows me to do whatever I want. As long as I do my nine to five and give in the hours and deliver on work and it's quality is not compromised, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. So you can partner with whoever, you can go moderate panels, you name it. So what that happens is I've been a big preacher, an absolute big preacher. I was telling you uh, before the sh we started rolling mm -hmm. that I just, I asked, I told people about having a very eclectic life where you, you can surf today, tomorrow you're back in office, you know, the next day you're meeting maybe a minister, a president or whatever. The following day you're with your friends having a good time, celebrating someone's birthday. It's a baby shower. The next time you're here, it doesn't matter. It's your absolute life. Mm -hmm. As long as you do everything to a standard or a quality that is, you know, that you've set for yourself and you treat everyone fairly and kindly, respectfully, I believe there is so much growth that can come uh, from having a very balanced life. So that's what my social media is about. Mm -hmm. Just showing that you can create balance without, you know, like your life doesn't have to be a, a, a walking LinkedIn. You, you know, you could, <laughs> you could have, you could be LinkedIn, Instagram I and love Twitter. It. <laughs> At the same time, you know, you don't have to be professional. Oh, that's so freeing, George. It's you have no so idea. Freeing. It's yeah. so freeing. It's so freeing. And most of the people I that battle I battle with that too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I'm a total professional. And then here I am podcasting. And yeah. I'm, some days I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, yeah, I'm, how yeah. far did I go? Yeah. What can I tweet? Yeah. What can I post on my Instagram <laughs> yeah. story? You yeah. know? But sometimes, of course, you leave some stuff. Maybe if you don't want your brand to, to go a certain way. But there's so much joy and happiness in balance. Mm -hmm. And my social media has... Now it's like proper therapy sometimes. Mm -hmm. You must learn how to switch it off though, because you True. might lose your mind. True. But uh, that now shows that we have proper professionals on the continent mm -hmm. who know how to balance. And I was saying, a lot of clients who now come on board, they're so bored in the, in the boardrooms and their offices, they want to partner with someone who shows that you can be professional and have a life. Totally. You know, and that there's a proper, there's a proper age and market and money being given to people who are just themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So I cannot stress that enough. Having a proper balance, proper balance in your life and showcase through social media mm -hmm. can take you so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel freed by that message personally because <laughs> it's like being able to bring your full self. And I, I think sometimes that's why there's this generational divide. Like people are like, oh, Gen Z, blah, blah, blah. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, but because I think, first of all, they need a bigger reason to believe. And then they just want to be. They just want to be. They just want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We were saying somewhere that uh, Gen Z is more focused on saving the world. You're like, huh? You care about conservation and yes, plastic? Yes, as it should yeah, be. Yeah, as it should be, you know, yeah. but you think they're just out here uh, just yeah. bungee jumping they for need no to reason. to connect to something deeper. Yeah, yeah. Beyond, that's it. Beyond paychecks, whereas we were like, what job? Where? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> for us, it was like school, do this, yeah. get a car, get a Corolla first, <laughs> exactly. get a starlet, then get a Corolla. If you go for a demio, and then you marry and then you make the money and then you get a bigger car yeah. and then you visit your people in your rural area, you build a house there <laughs> and then you die. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Miserable. Yeah. So yeah. now at least the world is changing and I, I, we are so happy that we're now in this age where you've seen both, mm -hmm. both the metaverse and landline. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, all right, I think I'm yeah, in the right place. This is cool. Yeah. This is cool. Well, Georgie, it's been so nice to have you on Same. the podcast. Thanks so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming through. And uh, you know, one of the things that I always, when I think of you, I'm like, gosh, I one day I'd like to meet your mom because you're, oh, yeah? so, <laughs> you're just so well-mannered. Like, oh, yeah, thank you. total gentleman. Yeah. You know what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hey, okay. Please, I'll cut this part and send it to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big ups to, to the folks that raised you, honestly. Well, thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I think um, you're definitely making an impact and having people to rethink, you know, what it means to be successful as well. Mm. Yeah, exposing the fact that you went through difficult times and um, yeah, and you, you've made pivots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, that that's life. It, it's never a straight mm. line. It's that's never true. a straight line. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. There's no latency in life. Exactly. Yeah, there we go. yeah, so I wish you all the best. Thank you, me, yeah. me too. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see everything else you accomplish. <laughs> yeah, excited for your work at Portland as well. Thank you. Yeah. We have something happening next, next week, the week after, so there's always something. So anyone yeah. tuned in, there's always a surprise on social media. Awesome. Always. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Cool. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah.